Don in London, hello, it's June 8th and uh, just gone 6 in the morning the sky's blue but it's not going to stay that way here in London, UK early start for me, been up for ages my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour my addictive substance, alcohol could have been anything and my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things being with the right people, in the right place, doing the right things. Or so I thought, in the past, always based upon trying to survive and do better in career and in relationships. So trying to be perfect and never so. A very trying person. And over the last day or two I've started to look at my videos. And there's quite a lot out there. Enough about the daily reflections and steps which follow on from this video I've just extended them but uh, theory into practice theory is great knowing the answer but can I put it into practice <coughs> excuse me so what are the steps of AA 12 steps of recovery all about living in the moment of now all about being part of included in the world dealing with our feelings our emotions being in the moment means being in the spiritual moment that is the only one which counts living in the present moment not living in history and daydreams and not living in the future and daydreams although we are apt to need our daydreams from time to time wouldn't it be nice if and thank God it's not like it used to be so steps in action for me very important coming for out of theory into practice I spent quite a lot of time studying the, the readings and the literature of the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous and then said to myself, well, yes, all those things are good, but how do I put them into practice? Well, the only place I can put them into practice is now. So now I understand what the steps are there to do, simply to make life possible, to know and understand my feelings and know and understand what I can and cannot do. So as they say some things we can do some things we can't do and we learn the wisdom each day to know what is possible and not possible so how do these steps work well June is all about step six for me which is looking at my liabilities and personal traits and my fundamental personality traits which cause me problems are extremes of fear extremes of covering up in case somebody finds me out and extremes of ego so fear brave facing putting on a brave face so you don't know what's going on inside me and ego all built built on guilt and shame and being shown up I guess don't tell people just in case they use it against you that came from early childhood wherever the source was that's what was there and a lot of the time these days we do cover up shame, guilt, whatever it is unless we actually say listen, listen to the world and look out there everybody's the same in all these respects we all need enough courage, faith and confidence to keep going even when life is tough so the 12 step program of AA has helped me sort out and understand how to practice life putting everything into practice and it's ok to make a mess of things because that means I'm learning providing I don't sh shut myself off from learning so if I can have humor most of the time about the mistakes I make and also practice the principles of do no harm and be a part of contribute and see where life can go today so as long as I know how am I feeling why what can I do which is being assertive and when I'm with people how are we feeling why and what can we do together is empathy so assertive empathy it doesn't mean I'm going to get my own way it means I can carry on with life and be agreeable given the circumstances which takes account of not only my wants and needs but other people's wants and needs and I often say needs met if we meet our needs our wants disappear because they're they're not absolutely necessary so step six in June is all about defects of character and I think and feel in my heart 
the defects of character are working at extremes of emotion at the far end of our emotions and not being in balance so if I have too much fear too much of a brave face and too much ego it shuts out my learning opportunities because I'm trying to prove that I'm right and okay equally if I have too much courage or courage faith and confidence which has no foundation in other words trying to bluff my way through things thinking I have courage faith and confidence I probably don't have it so in the middle if I say I don't really know right now what's going on but you know what do people say when they get to a meeting of other people what's going on and how often do we listen so if I can keep on listening to what is going on I get a sense of direction knowing how I feel right now and what I can do and the reasons why so AA's 12 steps emotional, spiritual, physical emotional, knowing what my feelings are right now spiritual, dealing with things in reality spiritual is the ability to cope with now according to those who have been doing it for quite a time mostly other people as best they can and we learn from others what it is to be spiritual living in the moment, living real living in balance and so emotional, spiritual, physical if I know how I am physically on a daily basis do I need to do something to improve my overall health and the answer is yes, always but not to the point of extremes I used to which is extreme drinking, extreme sports, sports like behaviour extreme physical pursuits all I do is burn out so today I, don't, I prefer not to burn out and just keep things in balance enough of being in the middle in balance around all the personality traits so while some people say defects of character it doesn't mean that a personal personality trait is bad it means it's probably at an extreme without foundation Anyway, enough of me. Um, what follows? Daily reflections for June 8th. I have to keep looking at the clock because I'm not looking at the daily reflections book which has got the date in it. So daily reflections over the years and also step 6 at the end. Uh, the reading of step 6 which comes from the 12 and 12. At the end of my videos usually and normally I will say the serenity prayer. So I will. And it's the can do, can't do wisdom to know the difference it's a prayer of meditation and it's practical because we put it into practice so whether it's to God or good conscience is up to you as an individual and not up to you following another individual nothing in the 12 steps is about following other people in what they do but maybe learning from their example what will work in your life freedom of choice so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer God Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today. Don in London, hello. Day Reflections for June 8th from this book, the AA. Alcoholics Anonymous Day Reflection book, all about the 12 steps and 12 traditions. So, June, all about step 6, about removal of defects of character, or at least understanding what our defects of character are, and how at extremes of behaviour we get stuck. So, for t today, opening up to change. Self searching is the means by which we bring new vision, action, and grace to bear upon the dark and negative side of our natures. With it comes the development of that kind of humility that makes it possible for us to receive, God, receive God's help. God is true, love and wisdom of others. We find that, a bit, that bit by bit we can discard the old life, the one that did not work, for a new life that can and does work under any conditions whatever. And it goes on to say, I have been given a daily reprieve contingent upon my spiritual condition. That is how I am today provided I seek progress not perfection. To become ready for change I practice willingness opening myself to possibilities of change 
If I realize there are defects that hinder my usefulness in AA and towards others, I become ready by meditating and receiving direction. Some of us have tried to hold on our old ideas and the result was nil until we let go absolutely. That's letting go of the old ways. To let go and let God. God is truth, love and wisdom of others. I need only surrender my old ways to him. I no longer fight nor do I try to control, but simply simply believe that with God's help. I am changed and affirming this belief makes me ready. I empty myself to be full of awareness, light and love, and I am ready to face each day with hope. And that comes with change. And the serenity prayer, which helps me on a daily basis many times, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today. Don in London, hello, it's June 8th, 2009, Monday morning, time just coming up to quarter to nine and uh, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behavior yes addiction life is difficult that's what M. Scott Peck said is the first sentence of his book the road less traveled and life is indeed difficult so when we get into difficulty or more difficult situations where we become obsessed or addicted to a substance or behavior it means that everything is out of proportion there's no balance in our lives anymore and we crave the thing that we we covet that thing which made us feel good in the first place now has turned on us and become an absolute liability and in the process we addicts alcoholics I'm an alcoholic in recovery are liabilities when we're in active addiction because we don't know ourselves too well and we don't and nobody knows exactly what we might do next except head for the bar head for the pub head for uh, an off license or supermarket to get some more booze so these days recovery is much more appealing to me simply because I've got some mileage if you like on the clock about how to stay in recovery and I've learned that from family community and civilization as we know it and what helps me most is uh, on a daily basis being able to attend AA meetings that's Alcoholics Anonymous a fellowship of men and women who have come together for one reason only to stay sober a day at a time and if you'd asked me five years ago could I do this I'd have said no it's impossible I cannot give it up it's, it's my best friend or rather I'd have said yes I can give it up please give me the space to do it I will isolate and try and make life work my way and the answer is my way or the highway is into exclusion isolation and that horrible place where we depend again on that thing which we think is going to solve our problems or at least obliterate them for such a long time that we maybe can stop waking up and for me the horror of not wanting to wake up gave me my mo moment of clarity where I realized I couldn't do it on my own and uh, I rang up my psychiatrist and said I can't do this on my own and then was offered I was told not to stop drinking straight off because I might get a seizure and then I had a, a, a session with the psychiatrist who said you know maybe the only answer is to go to a detox unit for three weeks and see if you can get Get, get dried out and I said yes of course I'll go and they arranged it for three days later from Friday to Monday and by Monday I didn't want to go of course but I did and it was probably the saving of me to accept help and be included and have some people on my side where the rest of the world had to abandon me because I was just unmanageable so that's how I got started clarity somewhere just one moment and then of course the clouds cover up again and we want to keep on doing what we're doing because that's the only thing we know to do and hopefully we don't wake up but these days I do hope I wake up so that there is a big difference over the last few years of how things have gone and you know what we all stay on day one in the fellowship program and I smile when I say that but we can be doing the same day of admitting and accepting our powerlessness over alcohol and if we drink again life will become not only unmanageable it will be, become very short-lived often so the Fellowship of AA is integral and uh, what the Fellowship has done for me is absolutely see that there are people who are constitutionally 
in need of help and support. Sorry, I just had to uh, turn that off. So where am I today? I was absolutely gratified by the meetings I went to over the weekend. Uh, two, one venue different and one venue I haven't been to for a few weeks. So I went to the Response Bookshop, which I haven't been to for months. And it was a nice small meeting where somebody shared the truth of how they got to sober. And it was an excellent, excellent sharing of experience, strength and hope. So now, with that one under my belt and uh, getting enough rest on Sunday to stop my feet from hurting from another complication, uh, I got to my old regular meeting where I used to be treasurer down at Flood Street. And there was an amazing uh, share, a share by another individual about how they got to sobriety and how they help others, including their family. But I can't share about that. That's their story. So my story here today is I'm alive. Uh, one day at a time, and the Fellowship of AA helps me. Unique, authentic people finding recovery remain unique, authentic people, not not stuck in dogma, and certainly not stuck uh, in a cult, as some people think it is, because of this thing, this thing called God or a higher power. And the God question and the higher power question are really: Are we the higher power in our lives with choices, and are we? Uh, believers in God and the simple answer is on any day, any given day anyone can be an agnostic an atheist or a believer in God because we see nature and providence as it is you know the wonderment of the universe so mine's a very nuts and bolts understanding of what God may or may not be God is love God is truth God works through people and if I realize that I get my wisdom through other people that's a good definition of God for me it means I'm not in charge I'm included a part of things and my higher power, often AA, often my mother who's got great wisdom and is of a, a significant age these days, my sister, my brother, people I meet, friends in fellowship, I get wisdom if I have my ears open and I'm included. So that's where I come from when I do these videos. It's about experience, strength and hope. And there are uh, I, apparently 720 meetings of AA in London and there's a preamble shared at each one and then I'll do a reading from, our, from my literature, which I've got from AA. It says here, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sex, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay, st stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And yeah, that's it really, that's the fellowship. And then the rest of life is how we live it. You know, it's about how we want to live our lives. And in the, uh, <coughs> I'm getting my five year chip tonight, hopefully. Uh, at my meeting, the chip cupboard was locked and we couldn't get in last week, so I have to smile about that. And I also have to smile that I went to another meeting to try and get a chip there, but they didn't have one. All, every chip all the way through to 20 years, but not the five-year one. So there must have been a run on them, or it was God, or whatever it was, teaching me a lesson about patience and tolerance. And I had to laugh at myself, because it's, the chip represents something that I've achieved. At the same time, it's just another day in recovery. So the gift is uh, more wisdom accumulate, accumulated so I can make more informed choices, but it won't stop me making mistakes. So daily reflections for today, this one, all about step six, uh, looking at our areas which we can improve on, our defects of character, because uh, it's six months and it's a 12 step program, so each of these daily reflections in June tends to go along with what is step six about, and this is what it says, opening up to change. Self-searching is the means by which we bring new vision, action and grace to, to bear upon the dark and negative side of our natures. With it comes the development of that kind of humility that makes it, in, it possible for us to receive God's help or good conscience or wisdom from other people. We find that a bit, a bit by bit we can discard the old life, the one that did not work, for a new life that can and does work under any conditions whatever. It goes on to say, I have, given daily, I, I have been given a daily reprieve contingent upon my spiritual condition, provided I seek progress, not perfection, to become ready to change. I practice willingness, opening myself to the possibilities of change. If I realize there are defects that hinder my usefulness in AA and the world and towards others, I become ready by meditating and receiving direction. 
Some of us had tried to hold on to our old ideas and the result was no until we let go absolutely. To let go and let God or good conscience or what people share with us. I need only surrender my old ways to him. But, and it goes on to say, I no longer fight nor do I try to control but simply believe that with God's help or others I am changed in affirming this belief affirming this belief and it makes me ready I am to miss myself to be full of awareness light and love and I am ready to face each day with hope and you know uh, each day with hope experience strength and hope from others experience strength and hope we're learning on a daily basis are so important so what works for me uh, being in fellowship getting tuned in every day doing a bit of meditation and accepting who I am today an alcoholic in recovery and all the meetings over the weekend were about just doing it one day at a time so that's what I'm trying to do so the serenity prayer to God or good conscience or your higher power grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference just for today Don in London, good morning, it's June 8th, 2008 and the time is 7.15 in the morning and uh, attempt number two at doing this video. I seem to have a lot on my mind this morning and um, odd really, I uh, was looking after somebody's pet, for, well I suppose it's a pet, it's, it was a parrot called Teddy and uh, he's gone back to his owner and they're very pleased because he's alright and I'm, I'm pleased that he's okay too because there's nothing like having the responsibility of someone else's a part of somebody else's family actually because I think family pets just are that part of the family and uh, I was dubious about having this parrot and wondered what to do with it and I'm not so good with caged birds uh, princip in principle I don't like the idea but I understand this parrot is where it is and looking after it made me feel good and uh, now it's not here, there's not that chortling, chuckling sound in the background coming from a, no a noisy bird whose only word really which he, he knows really well is hello or hello Ted and uh, you know the silence and the quiet is interesting it's reflective and meditative and I guess I've been reflecting on how I feel being on my own when I wake up in the morning and the answer is not as good as when I'm with somebody else So those sorts of adjustments, I mean I'm in a, a relationship which is absolutely wonderful and still you know it feels peculiar when I'm not with the person and she's wonderful so maybe that's why I'm feeling a bit lonely this morning anyway the good news is that we'll see each other later I also have uh, a friend who's away looking after their brother and the, their brother is not well and it's made them aggressive and dis very very discontented because it's something they cannot stop and it's something they cannot get over and it's going to be with them forever and you know if you're trying to help somebody a family member or somebody else without support the danger is we, we can become overwhelmed and do you know that's why AA the fellowship of AA is so important to me because it gives me a reference point most days to live in the day, understand my emotional, spiritual and physical condition. And at the moment for me the phys physical condition is relatively okay but it's contingent on me doing my work to make, make sure it stays that way. So I have type 1 diabetes and also I have clinical depression and uh, there are complications around those things so I need to maintain and manage and look at various aspects of my my, my physical, physical condition on a daily basis and also know where my emotional basis is too or what's going on with my emotions and uh, I guess the feeling of alone is not so good so I'm going to have to go to an early meeting of AA so that I get my balance back and I feel good about being just me in the moment so it's important and the gift of AA is, is a fellowship it's not an organisation it's a, a fellowship born out of caring for other people who have a similar outlook or a similar complication so being an alcoholic in recovery is a good thing for me it means I'm learning a lot of things for the first time which I never knew simply because my drinking started at such an early age and uh, that's, not so, that's not nobody's fault it's just the way life was back then
And the gift is that as we get along in the fellowship is we understand very much where our ailments come from, the, the isms we have, the addictions, and we can work out what we want to do about it. So that serenity prayer which says, God, all good conscience, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And that's the past and the future, because one, has, one, one hasn't happened yet and the other is over. Courage to change the things I can, that's what's going on in my head right now, and have the wisdom to know the difference. And that is not to try and get to an end result too quickly, but to let life happen so I may be part of it rather than trying to control it. All really important stuff, and we forget it in the moment of something going wrong. So I'm emailing somebody at the end of a, a very difficult situation, tens of, th well, many thousands of miles away, and they are distraught and they are concerned and they're worried about their brother. So I'm doing my best, and that is to keep on being there and being in touch. Where am I today? I'm okay. I prefer not to be alone. It's a weird feeling. And uh, the more I feel like this, the more discombobulated I'll be if I don't go to a meeting. Anyway, this is all about recovery, and these are all parts of my day. Daily reflections is something which uh, helps me just try and recalibrate myself. And so this book, Daily Reflections for Alcoholics Anonymous, is a godsend, really, because it makes me look at what's going on. And it says for June 8th, opening up to change. Self-searching self is the means by which we bring new vision, action and grace to bear upon the dark and negative side of our natures. With it comes the development of that kind of humility that makes it impossible for us to receive God's help or good conscience. We find that, a bit, that bit by bit we can discard the old life, the one that did not work, for a new life that can and does work under any conditions whatever. And that comes from As Bill Sees It, page 10. Oh, there you go. And it says, goes on to say, I have been given a daily reprieve contingent upon my spiritual condition, that is living in the moment, provided I seek progress, not perfection, to become ready for change and practice willingness, opening myself to possibilities of change. If I realize there are, no, there are defects that hinder my usefulness in AA and towards others, I become ready by meditating and receiving direction, some, uh, and receiving direction. Some of us have tried to hold on to our own old ideas and the result was nil until we let go absolutely. Alcoholics Anonymous, page 58. Then, and then to let go and let God, or good conscience, I need only surrender my old ways to Him. I no longer fight nor do I try to control, but simply receive, believe that, with God's help or good conscience, I am changed and affirming this belief makes me ready. I empty myself to be full of awareness, light and love, and I am ready to face each day with hope. And you know, the meetings we go to are all about experience, strength and hope. So we work carefully. If we stay in the day, we can just about get by and make anything work. Or if it's impossible, we rec recognize it is so. And we stop trying to do the impossible, which is make life work all on our own, as if it was our world and we were God or some omnipotent person. And we're not, we're just ordinary like anybody else. And the gift of ordinary, of course, is that we can do extraordinary things. And, you know, time and circumstances allow us to, to be able to participate even when the chips are down and try and do the right thing. As Bill sees it, a very useful tone with uh, daily readings. <coughs> Page six, 164, a saving principle. The practice of admitting one's defects to another person is, of course, very ancient. It has been validated in every country and it, ca ca it characterises the lives of all spiritually centred and truly religious people. But today, religion is by no means the sole advocate of this saving principle. Psychiatrists and psychologists point out the deep need that every human being has for practical insight and knowledge of his own personality flaws and for a discussion of them with an understanding and trustworthy person. So far as alcoholics are concerned, AA would go even further. Most of us would declare that without a fearless admission of our defects to another human being, we could not stay sober. It seems plain that the grace of God or good conscience will not enter to expel our destructive obsessions until we are willing to try this. And 
the principle of expression of all that is going on for us and maybe those things which are difficult to admit to or express once they're out there their power over us is less simply because we have shared it and we realize then that probably what we're worried about has been done 10 billion times before by other human beings or there would be no word for it and uh, I remember somebody saying to me if there's the word for something that has been done then you can absolutely guarantee that it is part of human nature and uh, I guess these defects of character we need to be careful of because if we go back to the dark side of where we made life work badly through to into the light which is using courage, faith and confidence we have a better grip on what we may do in the moment but it doesn't make us omnipotent it makes us ordinary, extraordinary and uh, for me these days if I'm feeling a bit weird or, one, or not wonderful I need to look at what is going on inside me and uh, wait, work out a way to meditate and reflect and look for the good of what's going on and be a part of it and don't forget the upsides and the downsides of life we all have them anyway my time is up uh, I better get on and go to an early meeting Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship that fellowship is AA and today I just want to read from this book 12 Steps and 12 Traditions which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about 12 steps so we can live well open, honest and willing and the 12 traditions in fellowship unity, service and recovery sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time so what is AA? I just share off the preamble which is on this little card which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking so what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are so we try not to tell each other what to do but there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life and uh, June for me is all about step 6 so I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me and step 6 it says here we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character 
So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? Well, it probably boils down to, the, in the biblical sense, the seven, si deadly, seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet, you'll find many versions, and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly. Right, so, pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. It has been called the sin from which all others arise. Pride is also known as vanity. So pride is the first deadly sin or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD, an epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins, humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code. So these 12 steps, principles, these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is entirely up to us. No one's going to stop us doing it another way. And if they were trying to stop us, our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way. We get stubborn and defiant often, or I did. So, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys, or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator. It's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. 
Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a, a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release, my obsessions to drink vanished. It was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way, because I was a stubborn son of a gun, and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self-will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personality traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose, and that's to do with our thinking and and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. 
that is the measure of our character defects or if you wish our sins if we ask God will certainly forgive all our derelictions but in no case does he render as, com as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation that is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves he asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character so indeed it is about building of character and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be an addiction too as many have found so step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society this does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was a few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We, we would be back on pride and self-will. The key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that, can, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps, no one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief no one wants to be angry enough to murder lustful enough to rape gluttonous enough to ruin his health no one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy or to be paralysed by sloth of course most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock bottom levels we who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves, yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway, but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be what we must recognize now is that we exalt in some of our defects we really love them who for example doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow or even quite a lot superior isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition to think of liking lust seems impossible but how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds and even whilst staying within conventional bounds many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance indeed we can talk ourselves into anything I know this, I've done it self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable in a perverse way we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority gossip barbed with our anger and I'm right I'm smiling there because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery I mean the simple answer is the more self-righteous we are the more we are dogmatic 
the more we are stubborn de and defiant about something we believe there is one path and it happens to be mine and what I've learned in recovery my path if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it even though we like to do it and to an extent I can do it too even now and then I think to myself I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you and if I don't know what's right for you how do I know what's right for me which is why I always say I need to keep on learning when gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call it only we call that retiring. Consider too our talents for pr procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of the of such defects as these, and few of us would be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according, of course, to our various and sundry ideas are what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them many many will ask at once ask how can we accept the entire implication of step six why that is perfection this sounds like a hard question but practically speaking it isn't only step one where we made the hundred percent admission we were powerless over alcohol can be practiced with absolute perfection the remaining eleven steps state perfect ideals so perfect ideals so strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it we make a beginning and keep trying so contingent on the day we ask for help 
and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence we are on a better wicket if you like, if you're a cricketer if we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open mindedness we shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction it will seldom matter how haltingly we walk the only question will be are we ready so contingent on the day we ask are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive excessive outlook or personality trait are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up let's dispose of what happen, appears to be a hazardous open end we have left it is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection we know that some delay however might be pardoned that word in the mind of a rationalizing alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long term meaning he could say how very easy sure I'll head towards perfection but I'm certainly not going to hurry maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely of course this won't do such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalization at the very least we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible or well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others the moment we say no never our minds close against the grace of God or common sense after all what else would God's words be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man we're not talking rocket science here we're talking common sense delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal this is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us as nature intended nature and providence all these wonderful words I like because you know spiritual is now spiritual is in the moment it's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now and either we accept life on life's terms acceptance is the key always or we get into trouble again and it's being defiant or angry against our situation often that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve so just a reminder the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, and diligence and I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past 
I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect it's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out my defect would be not to say it if you get my drift so these are my views and understandings of step, step 6 and 7 so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do and if I feel ok given my current situation my feelings fit my, my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can, I can get on with it but if my feelings don't fit my current reality my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or my virtues are without foundation courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now why? because I haven't given it, I haven't given it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent and the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today